All right, coaches, this is uh, Coach Coldar from 92 Mesh Group Channel. I'm joined tonight by a couple of my buddies, uh, Coach Napper out of West Virginia and Coach Dular out of South Carolina. Uh, coaches, it, this is, uh, Coach if, you're, if you're in the chat right now, give us a, uh, you know, shoot us a message. Let us know if you're here. Uh, we're all here tonight. We're going to kind of catch up with uh, Coach Mummy and look at his tweets. And, um, you know, if there's anything going on, you know, in the world of the air raid people want to talk about. While I got you guys here, uh, did want to let you guys know about Air Raid Nation. Uh, it, it just got some big news today from, from Coach Mummy's uh, uh, people about Air Raid Nation. They are going to give out badges now if you attend the One Back Clinic um, and things like that. So if you're trying to level up with your Air Raid certification, you want to do those kind of things. Well, we've just been granted the, the uh, permission that if you attend Air Raid Nation in May, that you can get a 92 Mesh Group badge attached to your uh, your profile on Air, on, uh, Air Raid Certifies. We're really excited about that. Uh, that's going to turn out to be a great clinic. But before we even do that, we have Air Raid Intensive uh, on December 7th here in Fayetteville. And, and Coach Napper is already scheduled to be here. And Coach Joe Salas, who may be in here a little bit. Um, hopefully, Coach Dular is not here. They got a game this week. And if they win, they're going to be playing for the ship. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be... Uh, They'll be a little busy on that deal, and that'll be all right, too. But, um, you know, just excited to have you guys in here and uh, and, and Coach Gangstead and, and, and Puvalowski and Bell and uh, Coach Rogers and Coach Woods. Nice to see you all here. If you have any questions for us, uh, you know, while we're waiting on Coach Mummy and, and AJ and those boys to get started, you can shoot them over here to us. Um, one of the things that Coach Salas and I talked about, and I really hadn't talked to these guys about it because they've kind of been busy, but I'm sure they're going to be in, is we're going to try to do a podcast uh, where we come on and just kind of answer questions, you know, a couple of times a month. And uh, that podcast will be called the uh, the Squadron 53.3 podcast. It's over on Podbean. Uh, we're trying to get it up on iTunes as well. And uh, just really excited about that. And, um, and Coach Puff, we, we're glad. We hope your staff has a good time at the clinic. Uh, if you're coming to Air Raid Nation, if you, if you register for the clinic, you're going to get a free T-shirt. And we're giving, we're giving away uh, some, some merch and some things like that. And, uh, and, and so, you know, we're really excited about that. That's going to be a small deal. It's going to be about 40 coaches. But, uh, uh, hey, Coach, Coach Dular, who do y'all play this week? Dutch Fork. Dutch Fork. Dutch, is that Tommy Knotts? It is. It is. <laughs> yeah, Tommy yeah. Knotts is one of the better coaches uh, in North Carolina, South Carolina. But uh, a lot of you guys don't well, understand. In America. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> uh, Coach, uh, Coach Dular works at Carolina Forest down in Myrtle Beach, and, and they started a new program from scratch pretty much. And, uh they built that thing up, and it's a powerhouse. The head coach he works for, Mark Morris, is a, is a good friend of all of ours, and, and, and he's elite and um, really excited about that. So as we're waiting on Coach Mummy and them to get started, anybody have any questions for the guys? You know, I'll, I'll pass them along to them. Can you, you guys can't see the chat, right? Or can you? If you go to the YouTube channel, if you're on your computer, fellas, if you go to the YouTube channel, you can see the chat. But as the questions come in, I'll pass them along to the boys, and, and, and then we'll go from there. Um, also, just want to let you know a couple of big news. We're going to be moving the uh, the air raid um, total air raid system over to Coach Tube full time. Um, that's going to free up some bandwidth on our website, so we're able to do some other things with the podcast and stuff like that. So if you have your membership pur purchased by November the 30th. Um, you're good to go. We're, we're, if you purchase it on our website or on CoachTube, you're good to go. But if you try to purchase after uh, December the 1st, you will no, not be able to purchase it on 92meshgroup.com. You'll have to go over to CoachTube. So um, it's going to be a little bit more expensive on CoachTube because we're updating some stuff with uh, with the ju Just Play software and, and doing some things like that. So between now and Black Friday, if, you, if you're going to want to get the good deal on, on Air Raid System, go ahead and hit that up. Um, so... Like I said, we're just kind of waiting for Coach Mummy and them to get started, and we wanted to get early because, you know, like I tell you guys in the videos all the time, I'm a coach, not a technician. Um, coach Knapp, what's uh, – how, how did y'all finish up this year? I know you guys – did y'all play off it, or how did it go? Yeah, we went to the first round of the playoffs this year, and we got defeated, but uh, that team's still playing. But we, we, you know, we did some things offensively that was good. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw something on Twitter. Uh, somebody uh, – I think Tom Lemming wrote an article about your head coach and some of the guys you guys – had up there pretty good players and uh yeah we got some pretty good studs man we got some pretty good athletes and they're getting after it. we're real young though started a bunch of freshmen this year so we got oh, okay. pretty good people coming up and then coach Dular, obviously he um he he coaches one of the uh 
one of the top quarterbacks in the country and uh, really excited about him. And then that kid in South Carolina is pretty good, isn't he, Coach? Oh, yeah. Now, I coach Mason Garcia. and We actually have Luke Doty in our county, too, and uh, he's another one of the top guys. Uh, Doty's going to South Carolina, and uh, my guy's going to be going to ECU. Oh, okay, good. Well, you know, they know how to spin it to win up there. I think Coach Houston's doing a good job up there at ECU, and they got a, a really good uh, – you know, history of spinning the ball. Coach Newkirk, um, right now what we're looking at, the only air raid intensive that's planned is the one in December. But I have to talk to these guys. I was thinking about maybe trying to do one uh, in conjunction with our state coaches clinic in February up, up near Greensboro. But, you know, all that's going to be dependent upon, uh, you know, how this one does and, and, and what, you know, all the college clinics are going to be doing. Because the end of February, March is college clinic time. And, um you know, one of the things that, that we want to make sure that we're doing is that everybody's being able to go around. But, you know, and, and I, I, shoot, I'd love for uh, for Coach Dular to host down in Myrtle Beach. We could all go down there and, and, and eat some seafood and, and do some stuff and have one down that way or even up up one north towards uh, West Virginia. Which reminds me, uh, we haven't really broke this out, so I'm just going to share this on the live stream. Um, we are going to start um, what we're calling um, 92 Consulting. We're gonna we're gonna start doing some some consulting where if you guys want us to come and, and sit down with you and and, and your staff one on one and clinic you, um, you know, like I said, Coach Dulars in South Carolina, Georgia area. I got North Carolina, and Virginia, and, and CNAPs up that way. And if you guys want us to come in and sit down, we're gonna be doing a little consulting work. Also, we'll be able to be doing some uh, some private online clinics where you can get on, you know, like a Zoom with us, and we'll, we'll we'll get in and do some things with you guys. And if that's something you're interested in, you can hit us up at uh, at consulting at um, at 92meshgroup.com, and, and we'd be more than happy to come do that. I actually uh, talked to a guy the other day who's trying to, to bring a, a couple of us over to Germany next spring to, to, to tutor some guys over there, so that would be pretty cool. Um, it, also, if you're going to AFCA in January, I know Coach Salas is, is going to AFCA. I hadn't had a chance to talk to these two guys about AFCA, but if you know we'll be at AFCA um, if you're going to be there in Nashville uh, the 11th through the 14th, uh, so if we can have some impromptu get-togethers up that way. Um, yeah, Newkirk, hey, sometimes you got to graduate from college, buddy. Coach Newkirk is telling us that he wanted to come to ARI, but it's the same day as his college graduation. So, I mean, you know, if your graduation is like mine, it's going to be one of them things. It's for all your people. It's really not for you. They, they hand you a note card, and you walk across the stage, and you hand it to the dude, and he reads your name. And I hyphenated my name so they didn't pronounce it wrong because that's all my mama said. She said, please, I hope they say your name right. And I said, okay. But um, – uh, let's see. Let's see if Coach Mummy and them have started on on the tweet deck yet, and and, and we'll jump into what they're talking about. Uh, you know, let's let's see what they got going on, if anything, because those guys those guys do a real good job. Um, I had a question somebody asked me today um, about uh, how long it takes for them guys to um, to grade your tests and things like that. They, um, you know, they're, they're getting after it pretty hard, but, you know, it's going to take two or three days, you know, to get your test, especially the midterm. AJ and those guys um, do a pretty good job about that. So um, if you're in that Air Raid certified program, just know that it takes – you can't go in there, sit down, and watch it, the videos and, and be certified in one day. You really have to uh, to do some things to, to make that happen. Um, so, hey, uh, Chris, were you planning on going to AFCA or, or have you thought about it? Yeah, I thought about it. I just got to check with my work to make sure I'm be able to go. Yeah, that's that's the only thing, you know, because AFCA for high school guys is Saturday to like Tuesday, and and some of us actually have to teach, right, Coach Dular? You you teach math, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, I tell you, hey guys, I'm telling you right now. Um, look, I, I I'm the talker of the group. I, I'm I'm the talker. He's the brains. This dude is brilliant. You know, he comes up with some stuff. If you want to learn some stuff about the air raid, talk to Coach Dular. He has a website too. Uh, what's the website, Coach? It's uh, DularAirRaid.com. Yeah, check that out. He's got an Air Raid uh, website, Dular Air Raid, and, and, and Coach has got a lot of different things on there. And, um, you know, he, like I said, he was one of the guys that when I first learned, um, he, he, you know, he just he was really, really good about imparting, you know, the things that he learned along the ways. And, and that's the one thing I like about the Air Raid community, man. We're not really stingy with, with our business. Um, 
Um, Coach Woods Jr. said he did his Monday and Tuesday, and his test scores were back in about four to five hours each, which that's about how mine was, too, um, when I took my test. Of course, you know, I mean, I did fail one test. I will admit it, but, you know, I took the test without watching the videos. <laughs> I said, hey, I'm smart. Let me take this test. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. And uh, my problem was, I, you know, the terminology was a little different, you know, because I don't, I don't call all my formations the same way. How, how close are you to what, what Hal does for? Formation wise, uh, Shane, are you using you know open and and all that stuff, or do you have some different words too? Nah, we 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 switched a long time ago. Um, you know, obviously all their stuff is great and, I, and we love it, but man, some of those formation names, I mean, it just you know it doesn't always quite you know it's not the easiest thing in the world. Yeah, so, my uh, favorite is brown and black. You know, because usually br means to the right and bl means to the left, but for them, black means the back to the right, and, <laughs> and brown means the back to the left. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was, like, that was the old Forty Nine er terminology. Yeah, uh, Coach Gangstead, it's it's uh, d u l a r, air raid, all one word dot com. Um, yeah, that that was one of the things. So when I took the test. You know, I started taking a test and I started having to think because, you know, even even when Joe and I split, you know, I changed a lot of my terminology as well, too. So we do, um, you know, for me, I, I use hero and halo to put my H to the right and H to the left and what people call like king and queen. And then, you know, I don't use slot or open flip. I use early and late, you know, for trips right, trips left. Um, you know, cause I had a guy actually message me on Twitter today and, and, and I don't know about you guys, but when people talk to you about air raid, does the, does the conversation inevitably get to, um, signaling plays and, and what you call things? Oh, all the time. I mean, I, people always want to know, first, I always want to know how we practice so much when, you know, once you get into it, you know, you're really not, but yeah, it's always about how you signal that stuff in. How do you get to the quarterback? How are you getting into the O line when you're no huddle? You know that kind of stuff. It, it, it's always, always those type of questions. Yeah, I had I had a coach from Hawaii hit me up uh, yesterday, and he said, "Coach, does the the call ninety read mean anything to you?" And I guess they had a a, a trade film or somebody, and that you know how sometimes you, you can hear what people are saying on the trade film, and people kept saying you know this word, and I was like, "Well, it don't mean anything to me." I I, I said, "If I had to guess, it's probably six calls." You know, because read to me, the only thing that we kind of read, read is six calls. So, um, but uh, I had, I didn't really hear that too much. So I was like, okay. And um, let's see if these boys have started their air raid chat yet. It doesn't, I don't really see it. it I see uh, getting ready to launch November. 5th. Oh, look at these guys. They got, they got uh, airplanes and all kind of good stuff on here now. Um, but yeah, I get, the, I get that a lot. And, um, I, I know. Does anybody else have any like any particular questions you want us to answer? Uh, you know, I can I can tell you that uh, you know all three of us have been head coaches. All three of us have been offensive coordinators. Um, I know uh, all three of us have worked at the college level. Coach Knapp had a chance to work with Matt Mummy down at Lagrange, and and Coach Dular worked with Coach Mummy down at uh, Valdosta. Um, also, want to give a shout out to uh, to Coach Malik Hoskins, who just got the head job at uh, at Lincoln University. Uh, Malik gave me my college job as the offensive coordinator at Lane College, but he was the interim up there at Lincoln, um, and he just got the full time head gig. So, if you got any air raid guys, um, you know, in that area that are D two qualified, hit him up. He's at, at Malik Hoskins. Um, that's Malik, M-A-L-I-K underscore Hoskins, H-O-S-K-I-N-S. You know, uh, I can tell you one thing, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna spin it. And um, another thing is he's going to look out for your kids. So, you know, that's that's really important. Air Raid Rogers wants to know how big your, your, your call sheet on game day is and what does it consist of. That's you, that's you Chris. I, I swear I had like a bazillion Twitter notifications from that mess that you did the other day. <laughs> Size of a note card, baby. Looks like a bar napkin. <laughs> well, but Shane, you, you're, you're like me. I have a sheet. I just don't never look at it. Yeah, no, I've I've gone through a different couple, uh, different couple ways of doing it. But uh, I, you know, I usually have a, a two sided sheet. You know, usually on one side it's kind of all my my base calls. On the back side, I've got some some specials and some game situation stuff and some reminders and, and uh, you know four minute offense, two minute offense. I always put my clock chart on the back page, things like that. But usually it's a, a front and back sheet. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of the same way with that. I have I have a sheet too, 
But my my situation with the sheet is I, I like to do um, I, I go back to what what I read that I don't know if you guys have ever read the book and I can't remember names, but if you try to go buy it, it'll cost you like three hundred dollars. That's Bill Walsh's uh, program mm-hmm. building book, the old school book. Yeah. I can't remember finding oh, yeah. the winning edge or something the like winning that. Winning edge. Yeah, if you read his book, you know Bill Walsh was kind of that first guy who wanted to script plays. And, and the reason he said he scripted plays in the book was that it was a lot easier to make decisions on Thursday afternoon than in his, in his office than it was on Sunday afternoon or in, in, during the game. And so that's why I um, – that's kind of why I do the play sheet, not necessarily for Friday nights in particular, but just to kind of get my mind thinking about, okay, this is what I want to do here. This is what I want to do there. Um, Coach Osgood wants to know, do we have any tips about how to involve the running back in the passing game from the pistol? Yeah, swing, swing him out and throw it to him. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tell people this all the time. People say, well, you know, Coach, what about this? What about this? I mean, winning. And, and when I train quarterbacks, I tell this. I mean, you know, Shane, you got a big-time guy. I don't know if you tell him the same thing, but I always tell my quarterbacks this. Hey, look, man, when you get in trouble, throw it back. Oh yeah, no, that's 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 one of our one of our rules, one of our top tens for our quarterback. When in trouble, throw to a back. I mean, there's a reason why that guy has led a lot of air raid teams in receptions because you know it's, it's usually an easy completion, and you're giving it to your best athlete. Yeah, and and, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I've gotten to where I like getting in kind of that offset pistol that everybody is going into that you know that Clemson formation that I call a hero halo. And then what I like to do is. Um, you know, motion that back out into the flat, you know, that fast motion motion deal to kind of stretch the defense. A lot of people were doing that. We did a lot of that at Lane with our stick draw stuff. You know, mm-hmm. we, would, we would motion that guy out there, and then we would let H be the, the lead on that on that quarterback draw. Yep. Coach Knapp, you're the, you're the wide receiver guy, right? You're gonna, you said you wanted to talk about wide receivers at Air AI. Coach Flynn wants to know what drills do you have to improve wide receiver blocking in the quick screen game? Well, you got to do a, a quick screen drill, you know, and the main thing is just teach them how to stalk. Here, here's the key on blocking quick screens is they need to protect the reception area first. You know, that reception area is right behind where they catch the ball at. And once you do that, they'll figure out who the most dangerous man is. Yeah, and, and um, if you looked at the video that I put up on the channel yesterday, I showed a little bit of the drills that we do um, that are going to be in the new in the 2.0 total air raid system. I showed a little bit of our team screen drill that I got from Shane and and, and Coach Dular, I mean Coach Dular and Coach Salas. And, and what we do on that deal is, you know, we kind of have bags out there and, and we teach landmarks. And and my big thing on on, on quick screen is I, I'm a huge flat for five guy. You know, I tell that inside guy, you know, I never tell a kid you got the corner or number one from the sideline. You got flat for five and you got the most dangerous, you know, and I tell the, the tackle because, you know, we like to pull the two guards and the guard on tackle. I tell him quickest release, flat for five. Then you got the second guy, then turn it up. And then the last guy, check for weapons and then get down the alley. Um, but I also think that, that you know, if, if you're having problems blocking quick screen, here's an idea. Take your wide receivers and let them play with your offensive line coach for a period or two. He, you know, he could teach them how to block pretty well, you know, and uh, yeah. you, know, you never, you never, you never worry about that. You cross train. Um, coach Dre wants to know why are some OCs so reluctant to change what they do, even when it doesn't work and when don't these guys and why, and when don't these guys listen to assistance? Yeah, that, that, that's, that, that sounds like a communication problem on Sunday. I don't, I don't know to help you on that one. That's a pretty general st- statement there, Coach Dre. The one thing I would say is that, you know, to be a successful head coach and to be a successful offensive coordinator, you need to have buy-in from all your assistants. Would you guys agree on that? Oh, yeah. And, and so you want to be able to do that. Um, <clears throat> what do you know of any programs that have adopted the air raid to eight- or nine-man level? That's from Coach Bell. Is he my – we don't, I don't have any eight or nine men around here. Um, except I ran it in arena football. I coached arena football. We did it. it oh, did a, you? Yeah. How, how did that work? I mean, pretty much is you just changed the protection because you're losing two back or two two tackles. Well, yeah, you lose your two tackles and you also, you know, you get your one back. Um, and, but your receivers can also go in forward motion. That was pretty neat. But it's basically all you did. You basically kept the X, the Y, and the Z routes the same. Right. You just look at your check down most of the time. 
All right, and Coach Gangstead, he's, he's got us a question, and I'm going to jump into some of the Air Raid chat stuff here. Um, he says, I'm big on learning from mistakes. What's the biggest mistake you have made as a coach, and what did you learn from it? Um, my biggest mistake is I thought I was too good. My I, biggest mistake. I started, I, started, I started winning a little bit, and, and, and you know, I, I forgot to stay a little humble. And, and, you know, the game of football, just like life, has a way of humbling you sometimes. Um, and, and so for me – I, I had to go back and say, you know, the air raid appro approach works in everything. You know, keep it simple. Do the little things because little things make big things. Uh, so, you know, for me, it was, you know, thinking that, that everything was always taken care of and forgotten how you get there. And sometimes you get complacent. And, and, and for me, that was one of the biggest mistakes. And, and I've matured so much since back then. Now, my, my, my defense on that would be I was 26 when I got my first head coaching job. So, you know, I, I learned on the job. I don't know that I was mature enough to handle success the way the way we had it so fast. And, and uh, you know, so mine was more of a character flaw than a coaching flaw, I would think. Coach Dular, what about you? I thought early on um, I would get locked into what I, what, I, what I thought I wanted to work more than what really would work. You know, when I, when I got better is when I finally started honestly taking what was there, you know. Um, you know, as a, as a coordinator, especially, you know, calling the plays as a head coach, you know, if something I thought on Sunday should work. You know, sometimes I'd get too locked in on it instead of, of uh, you know, pulling the rest of the playbook out and seeing what else could work in these situations. And, you know, it took me a little bit of time to kind of find my groove on that. And then I think as a head coach, you know, you know, you know this, there's so much more that goes into it beyond X's and O's that you think you're ready for. And you never are until you have to start dealing with situations yeah, to figure no out doubt. what you no think. Doubt. What about you, Chris? Anything? Yeah, I just uh, – I try to do too much. You know, I, I always joke about my little script here, but every time I didn't try to practice the air raid way or I try to add in too much stuff, it always backfired. And when I just would be simple and, you know, do routes on air, do set – people don't realize how important pat and go and noose drill is. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, doing the little things. I, I say this all the time. I stole this from Coach Salas, and, and you know, little things make big things, and it, it's just the it's the most important. Hey, Coach Ivy, I appreciate you, man. I hope the I hope that Tars course really helped you, Coach Ivy. Just finished the Tars. All right, hey, let's jump into some air raid cert stuff real quick. Um, they got a couple of questions on Twitter. Um, what is your favorite run concept in the air raid? Is the very first one. Um, uh, you know, for me, it, it's it's either going to be dart or, or counter. Um, you know, I was more of a dart man at first, but I, I, I've, I've kind of fallen in love with what uh, Bill Bedenball and them boys are doing down in Oklahoma with the counter. They're just they're just doing really well. And then the fact that you can run the quarterback and the tailback with that, that for me right now, it's the counter. What about you, Coach Knapp? Uh, well, what I was the running backs coach for Coach uh, Matt Mummy, and he told me, he said, Knapp, uh, we have three run plays. We run on the field, we run off the field, and we run the draw. <laughs> yeah, but that that's his honestly, uh, that that's his that's his that's his joke. He uses that one quite a bit. But I mean, yeah, do you have I, a particular running play? I mean, now I'm sure you guys are like me. You just kind of box count and and you you, you yeah, know you're gonna have a zone I, and a gap like, and hit it. I like dart and I like ISO because it's all man scheme and it's very similar to the pass pro. So once they learn the pass pro, they kind of know how to do the run box. Hey, we our four check the run plays and, and on the channel guys if you go over to, to youtube 92 mesh group we do have a video where coach knapp talks about running iso uh he does a really good job on that what about you coach dular uh Favorite counter one? no doubt corner counter yeah i think i think i think lincoln and bill bed and ball have made everybody counter people and uh Car coach rogers yeah counter trey I, I hear you all right a hey, second second question they have is uh do you prefer calling 94 or 95 versus one high or two high that's an interesting question yeah, I put that I'd call I'd call either versus either coverage, but if you if you put the gun to my head on it, I mean to me one high I think ninety four is probably a little bit better, and two high and ninety five is probably a little bit better. Yeah, I, I I think so too, and, and the reason being is that if you train your 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 wide once he goes under Sam over Mike, if that middle of the field is open, he can sit right down in the middle and give you a shot right there. Um, and, and then, you know, for me, 94 is just a cover three beater. Anytime you flood, I mean, it really, it's, it's flood strong, flood weak. So, I mean, either way. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. You're throwing a 10 yard out, you know, to a side that doesn't have a flat defender, you know, so that's, you know, that's usually a good play. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> what about, what about you coach Knapp? 
I totally agree. Uh, you know, one thing that I picked up from Hal, though, was 94, you're really attacking that strong side linebacker, and then 95, you're really putting that weak side linebacker in, in, a, in a bind. So I agree. I think two high, I call 95. One high, I call 94. Yeah, and that was the thing. When I when I went to coach at, at Grace Creek with, with Coach Lovett, who's the big-time wing T guy up here, and I was talking to Coach Mummy about that, he said, well, man, you got to realize Waggle ain't nothing but 95. <laughs> when you think about it, it really is. Uh, now, one thing I will say for me, I like to play action 95, and I like to roll to 94. You know, I, yeah. I, you know yeah. I like to roll out to 94, and I like to do, you know, 95 is kind of my play action deal on that deal. Uh, yeah, when I was at South, my last my last two years at South, we only ran 95 as a play action. We'd yeah. actually take our under, I mean, our H and run him on a shallow mm -hmm. and then play action and send the tailback out to be the flat route to that side. Right, right. And let's see what uh, what else they got. Um, <laughs> do you single in plays or use a wristband? How do you <laughs> – <laughs> I, knew yes, was, I knew it was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Um, uh, both. I, I've done yeah. both. Um, I've gotten away. I, I think for me, the biggest thing about signaling that I changed from is I used to go to the entire team looking to the sideline to now I want everybody looking in at the quarterback and the quarterback looking at us. So mm -hmm. he'll look at me and, 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 you know, he'll be singling the formation, you know, open, 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 open. And then, you know, and then the guys, and then he's going 90, 90, 90, or, you know, whatever he does. And, and the, the receivers are looking at him. And then, you know, he just tells the line and they snap it. Now, when I first started, the entire offense was looking over there. You know, we'd signal it in and they're all looking down at their wristbands. And, and you know, I think it just depends on your, your team and, and how uh, – you know how smart they are. I don't know if smart's the right word. I mean, I when we first started at Red Springs, our our wristband when we ran ninety five, the uh, the wristband that the Y wore had his route on it. It didn't say ninety five. It said under him over Mike. <laughs> so we've had we've had those wristbands. And we've had other ones. What about you, uh, Shane? Uh, we do both. You know, obviously, I think the benefit of going by the plays is if, if you want to go super fast, I think you have to you have to signal the plays in. That's the only way to go super fast. If you have to read a wristband, you're going to be a little bit slower. But I do think you can get a lot more in on the wristbands, and you're a lot more certain of your play calls. You know, it's better communication for your OL. I mean, there's a lot of benefits to the wristband. Um, but, you know, the plays, I mean, if you signal in the plays, you can go faster. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, like, so like I said, there, that's one of the other questions. And then the last question in the first thread is uh, fourth and three on the goal line. What you call it? Or fourth and th – I'm sorry, first, fourth and three game on the line. What do you call it? I know for me it was uh, – it's what's working. You know, we've been hitting slant all night. I'm going to throw slant. You know, yeah. it's stick, you know, stick's working. Stick's are great for a three-yard game. You know, if we've been hammering the counter and I, you know, I feel like I can get three on the counter, we're going to do that. Um, so I'm just going to go with what's working and what they give me. Yeah, and I think that's the mature way to do it because it's really hard to say fourth and three on the line was because you know I, I asked Coach Mummy one time I was like, hey, I need a, um, I, I need a, I need a two point play, and he said, well, this is my two point play. Yeah, you know, blue flip move, Y stick, bang, done. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you, know, <laughs> you know, and, and, and we all have a kind of an idea of what we like, but I, I think fourth and three game on the line. I mean, there's there's times where where counter just kills people, and then there's other times where shallow kills people. So you, you're like, I'm like Shane, you got to go with what's been working. Um, I'd freeze them. I try to make them jump. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, we, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Plus, what plus if it's on the half yard line and you're only going to get an inch and it's still fourth down? You know, that's good. Um, Coach Flynn wants to know, guys, can you give us a play sequence from a game drive this season that was or wasn't successful? What you what would you have done differently to uh, improve? God, how well, do you make that was successful? <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, call, call better well, plays. Like, no judge. Anytime it was I incomplete think, on first down. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think any time I think you just gotta try to get a rhythm. You know, and that's like one thing that Coach Mummy taught me that was huge was you gotta play the game before the game. I'm big into scripting the field. I've done a video on it before. But like I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is like my open field script. And I do it where I'm trying to get right and left hash and I give a sequence of plays. I think if you play the game before the game, your kids and your quarterbacks kinda know what you expect. 
Yeah, that, that makes good sense. As a matter of fact, you must have saw the, the, the chat because Coach Ivory wanted to know if we script uh, plays. And, and, and I, know, I don't know about you guys. And I, I know Chris does. I'm not so sure about Shane. But um, I kind of go with that idea of what Coach Mummy says. If you guys have done the air raid cert, you'll, he talks about how they script the field. You know, they look at what they're going to do coming off, what they do in the middle of the field, and what they kind of do in the red zone. Like for me, I did a video on Y Corner the other day. And uh, – and, and for me, I, I don't throw wide corner enough, I think, in the middle of the field. I don't know how much you guys throw corner in the middle of the field, but for me, I, corner doesn't even get in my mind until I get to about the 30. And then I start saying, okay, let's set this up because I love the corner route, you know, down towards the goal line. Now, do you throw it much in the middle of the field, Coach, Coach Dular? Uh, for me, it was more of a coverage thing. I always paired up stick and corner. Yeah. And yeah. if they were a zone team, I'm throwing stick. They go, man, we were going to throw corner. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, Coach Gangsta is using my own words against me. Uh, the last chapter of the total air raid system that we have on, on the website is uh, talks about making it your own. And, and one of the things I tell people is, you know, you, you have to do things that makes your air raid your air raid. Um, and, and, and so he's asking, you know, what do you do that's a, you, unique to you that allows you to make your air raid your own? Like, what do you do differently than maybe somebody else does? Mm. I, I'm pretty from the school of mummy, though, but I guess I give my quarterbacks more freedom because I give them a series of plays they can check into, and I let them make the call. Yeah. I think I, I, think I would go the opposite. Um, you know, I'm pretty traditional with everything I do. You know, obviously I, we've been doing it the same way for a long time, but I think I actually lock my quarterback in a little more robotic than, than probably Coach Mummy and definitely Coach Leach. You know, they give theirs yeah. a lot of freedom to check plays and to – and to decide who wants to go and check routes and cheat their reads. And, and I, I've never been like that. I, I, I kind of like that. I wish I could get there, but I tend to be more strict on, your, you know, you're going to do the reads exactly like they're coached. Yeah, and look, I, I'm the same way. And, and I, when I went to the, to the Foothills deal this spring um, and listened to, uh, to Pat Taylor talk, and if you guys have never heard of Pat Taylor, Pat Taylor is going to be at Air Raid Nation in May. Um, he, he's one of the better air raid guys around. He's he's written a couple of books. Open Grass Reads is one of the best uh, one of the best books in series on coaching six calls that's out there. But Pat and Drew Piscopo and Drew's Drew's in on the chat on uh, on Twitter right now. I tried to get him on, online, but he had some things he couldn't do. So he couldn't get on the screen. But um, the thing that Drew and Pat had me convinced is that you can give your quarterbacks more. And I talked about that yesterday. Um, when, when Joe and I did the podcast the other day, Joe talked about how they doubled down on culture and, and those culture culture means the expectation. And so I, I kind of, I'm kind of getting to that point where I feel like start them off as seniors and then work your way back until you reach where they are. Does that, if that makes sense, like I want them to be able to check and I'm going to give them the opportunity to check until they, until they can't check. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, I go back to what I always say to, when I talk about air raid, hey, look, man, we don't read people, we read grass. Mm -hmm. Just find the grass and throw it and, and, you know, quit trying to be cute. I think so many people want to, want to you know, and, and, and trying to make it their own, they get away from the true air raid. And I think that's what I like about you guys is we're really traditional because we say, hey, man, we're just going to do what works. We mm -hmm. don't need to do all of this other stuff because – it, it, taken away from the getting to that magic rep, if that may, you know that makes sense. Hey AJ, we appreciate you showing up. AJ Smith showed up in the uh, in the chat tonight. AJ is uh, the wide receiver coach down at the XFL Houston team. He's on Air Raid certified. He's a real good guy, man. If you guys hit him up on Twitter, um, and, and and he can help you out. He's 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 gonna he's an impressive dude, and he also works with the, those VAR systems. If you're at a bigger high school that has a little bit of a budget. VAR is pretty awesome. They have a virtual reality thing and a program that, that AJ and then Coach Mummy put together where you actually can put the goggles on and your quarterback can actually go through practice and get reps just like that. And it's pretty and it's and it's and it's pretty inexpensive if you're at a bigger program. Um, you know, one of the things Coach Mummy said when he got involved in it is he wanted to make sure that um, that it was available to high school coaches. So now, you know, so that's one thing. But we appreciate AJ stopping in. Uh, Chuck Leonard said, how aggressive are you on fourth down? What part of the field do you need to be to decide to go for it, a fourth down play? And how is your relationship with your defensive coordinator? Well, there's a lot there. And I, I can tell you this. Coach Salas said the other day in his video 
that they had made a decision at the beginning of the year that no matter where they were on the field, if it was less than it was fourth and less than five, they were going to go for it. And they went for it 45 times, I think he said. And he said the reason why they did that is they had nothing to lose and they felt like it gave it took some of the pressure of fourth down off. Um, what about what about you guys? I, I'm more of a field. I mean, I, as a head coach, I'm more of a field position guy. I mean, I got to have some kind of field position. Um, as an offensive coordinator, I'm like, yo, 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 if he says go, I got you, bro. <laughs> I mean, and that goes back to what Shane was talking about earlier, right, Shane, that, that difference of being an OC versus being a hit HC when you're making those plays? Oh, no, there's no doubt. When I, when I became a head coach, the, the punt, punter became my friend a lot more. There's no doubt. When I was OC, heck, go for it. I don't care where we're at. <laughs> and I guess that goes back to, to, to being the defensive coordinator. And I spent a little time as a defensive coordinator, too, so it was, it was fun. It was really enjoyable, but – uh, you know, that, that, I, I think I, I did a video not too long ago on the channel talking about the hardest job in the air raid, and that's being a defensive coordinator. Um, Chris, how, how, how do you how do you talk to defensive coordinators when they come into office when they start complaining about you not burning clock? Or I've had a time where they say, "Hey, man, can you stop scoring so fast?" And you know, my guys are gassed <laughs> out. You know. Yeah. Well, the main thing is that every good head coach that I've been with has always said, "Hey, fourth down is my down. I'll just I'll tell you if you need to get half or all of it." Right. You know, but it kind of goes back to I'm not. I hate to keep saying this, but it goes back to what I script. I mean, it could be where I'm at on the field. It could I do down and distance and stuff like that too. So I feel confident. My kids have at least done it in practice once. You know, we've simulated that. We played the game before the game. But um, you know, really, man, I I've had to tell the coordinator before. Hey, my job is to score. Your job is to stop them. Right. I'll try to help you out and slow down some. But I've got to do what they're. You know, I got to take what the defense is giving me. So that's kind of how it goes back to that. Shane, yeah. Shane as a head coach, let me ask you this, because I think we're all going to say the same thing, but let me ask you this. As a head coach, how do you interview your defensive coordinator when you're, when you're an air raid team? What are some questions that you would ask that guy? Uh, well, you know, probably the same questions anybody else would. But we do have that conversation about the stuff you're talking about. I mean, I tell them up front, you know, I always tell new coaches when they come in, when I talk to them, you know, what the workload's going to be, you know, what the schedule's going to look like, what the commitment I expect from them. And from the defensive guys, you know, they got to understand what type of team we are. But I also think we temper that a little bit with what our expectations are. You know, I, I know a lot of defensive guys, you know, they give up 21 points. They feel like they have a bad game. Yeah. Where I feel like if my D coordinator gives up 21, he probably plays pretty darn good. Right. Yeah. They're going to get more opportunities. The other team's going to get more opportunities just like we are when we go fast and we score fast, or we have the quick three and out. Yeah, and, and you know, that's – the... Go ahead. Okay, one of the things I believe in, though, and I, I got this from another coach. I can't remember who I stole it from. But I'm going to claim it because it's mine now. <laughs> is uh, on the, the first three downs, you know, when you get a ball, go slower. You know, go slower until you get that first, first down, then crank up the speed. You know, that gives that defense time. Get a sip of water. Let them talk to their guys. You know, let them make any adjustments they want, especially now when we got the TVs on the sideline. You know, let them see what's going on. But by slowing down to that first, first down, gives them a chance to catch their breath and get some communication going. Because I understand they do. They, they do. They need to catch their breath. they got to be able to talk because there's a lot going on in today's game. No one's just having to line up and stop ISO now. Yeah, I'm more, I'm more concerned as a head coach when I'm talking to my defensive guys. I don't worry about points per game as much as I do yards per play. Yeah. Uh, you know, yards per play and, and getting off the field on third downs. Those are the two things that I concern myself with as, as well. As, you know, obviously, you know, tackling and things like that. But if you're doing those, um, that's uh, that's that's going to happen anyway. You know, if you're tackling well, you're going to get off the field on third down and your yards per play are going to be there. But, you know, if your defensive coordinator is an ego guy and he's concerned about, well, we're going to hold him to 14 points or less. And, you know, I mean, dude, you're going to play 25 percent more snaps than than everybody else. So you're not you're not comparing apples to apples. You know, it's apples to oranges um, as far as that's concerned. Uh it's funny now. I've never really, I never really had an issue with any of my defensive coaches with how we coach our offense, how fast we go, the tempo. None of them have ever had an issue with that, mainly because we score usually. But what I have had arguments about is, is they want to use our players. Right. <laughs> you know, we got some studs on offense. 
And they want me to let them use them, and I won't. So. Well, and, and that was one of the things I can tell you as a head coach when I first got my job. And, and you know, I was more of a multiple spread guy. I had a hodgepodge of things, didn't really know a system, so to speak. But then when I started working with Joe, the one thing that we said is, hey, listen here, man, we're, we're going to take the four best guys and put them on offense. And that that's hard for old school and, and guys to think, you know, you know, it used to be you're going to take the best 11. The first one is going to be the quarterback and the next 10 are going on defense. And, right. and, and it's a it, it's it really is a philosophy flip that you have to understand that if you're going to be an air raid team. You know, you, you need to put your studs on offense. You, you got to be good at something. And Joe talks about this a lot in the podcast from the other day, which is really cool. He talked about, you know, doubling down on culture and the fact that, you know, we were really young on defense. We gave up some points. And matter of fact, in one of the biggest rivalry games of the year, he let the, he let the other team score so he could get the ball and go back down the field and win the game because he knew he wasn't going to stop him. You know, and, and Coach Mackey, uh, everybody knows Coach Mackey, uh, you know, he, he, he commented on the video. He's like, yo, that's some old Madden stuff. I'm like, yeah, it is. But – uh, you know, for me, that was a big difference was the, you know, that that change in philosophy of, you know, putting, you know, putting the studs on offense versus, um, you know, the other guys like that. Let's see. We got. Uh, yeah, that goes back to what Chris was just saying too. playing that game, you know, before the game. You got to know the situations where you got to tell your defense to score and then let them score. I mean, because there's time where in a game where the amount of time on the clock and you getting the ball back is more important than stopping them. Yeah. And you got to know that ahead of time. And that's, that's playing that game in, in your head before you get there. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and, and that's that, you know, that's a couple of the things that you look at, um, <clears throat> looking over in the air raid chat stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of guys are talking about, uh, yeah, they agree with us. They, they're, they're saying 95 versus one high. I always think it's easier to manipulate a one high safety. Now, I think we, we were kind of of the other opinion. We thought 94 was easier to work against the one high um, versus the uh, the 95 versus the one high. And that's from Coach Weston over in the thing. Now, the one reason why I kind of like 95, um, you know, versus the two high is what I always told my quarterback. And you guys can, you know, jump in at any time on this deal. But I always told him that once Mike was stacked, the play was open. If Y mm -hmm. stacks Mike, throw the ball in the hole, and it's going to be a completion. You know, don't don't wait until he, he runs past him or anything like that. You know, we would come in, and once he went under Sam over Mike, if once he got Y Mike stacked, you know, there's going to be grass over there, throw it in the grass. And, you know, with the one high safety look, um, I, I think you get into more what we would read and, and want to attack with shallow, you know, that levels type deal where, you know, you got a, a shallow coming and then the dig and then, you know, I, I like to put the verts. And that, that's a good question, too. We'll get to that in a second. Do you guys, I, I'm two verts on the outside tag to post. Do you guys have a post in there from the beginning or which one is that for you? Post. We always post on the, uh, the side that runs the dig. That guy's always going to be a post guy. I'm the same way. Yeah, see, that, that, that's one of those things where you talk about making it your own. A lot of guys, you know, they say, hey, what do you do um, with this? What do you do with that? Um, let's see, what, what else we got? Uh, yeah, you were talking about the, the one high deal with 94, I mean, 95. You know, to me, a lot of times with a, a one high look is usually some kind of split linebacker look, too. Yeah. And somehow they're going to get to a 4-4 four, four look if they're rolling down to three. And just a lot of times with 95, you cannot get across all that. And you end up having to settle in the middle, which, which is fine. A lot of times it's, it's open, wide open. But to me, it does. It ends up feeling more like a dig than it does a true wide cross, which typically you throw past the center. Right. What, what Shane's saying, I agree with. And an answer to that is if you can't stack that mic, you need to call wide curl. You know, because you want it to look like wide cross, and then he's going to sit down because that mic's bailing. Do you, right. do you run yeah. curl, Shane, at all? Yeah. It, 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 Honestly, it's one we always kick out pretty quick. I mean, it's still in there, and we still install it, and we work it, but it's never been a high-priority play. But I, I do agree with that. I do think versus those split linebacker looks, it is a great play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we I, I looked at it, and I can remember when we went to the um, you know, the TFS clinic in Nashville that time, you know, listening to him talk about – you know, running curl, and if you got press man, converting it to shakes and all that other stuff on the outside, and 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 I'm I'm kind of like you, and this is this is the big challenge for air raid. I, I'll tell a story real quick. Um, 
we were down at the uh, at the San Antonio Air Raid Clinic all those years ago, and we were sitting down at, at, at the at the Riverwalk. It was one of the better nights of my life. I was hanging out with How Mummy and Mike Leach at the same time. And uh, Joe Salas was there, too, but, you know, he's really not that impressive. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> but we were all kind of sitting there, and Matt was sitting Made my there. wife laugh at that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all of us all of us are sitting there, and, and they're talking, and, and they're talking football. And, you know, and, and I'm I'm just like, I ain't going to lie. I, I kind of rock starred on those guys. I just kind of sat there and didn't say a whole lot. And if you know those guys, that's like the, the least how they want you to act when you're around them. But they were talking about a concept, and I don't even remember what it was, but then all of a sudden Coach Leach just kind of looks at me, and he says, well, what do you think? And I'm like, you know, and then I'm like, well, well, coach, I, I really like what you're talking about. My problem is I'm trying to figure out what I got to take out to put that in. And he looks at me with a straight face and he says, you get it. And, and, and that's, uh, you know, and that to me is, is the big thing on that deal. You have to, you have to understand is, you know, what's the cost benefit analysis. I talk about that on the YouTube channel all the time. You know, what do you get out of that play? And like coach just said, you know, curl is like one of the first ones to come out and probably shouldn't yeah. be. I mean, if you're an old tech mobile guy, the all curl play was unstoppable. You couldn't beat it. <laughs> that's for uh, y'all, for well, y'all young boys. That's like Nintendo, to you know, <laughs> I was like, one of the things I like to do at the end of the year, especially, I probably should do it more during the season, but at the end of the year, you know, when I go through and analyze the offense, you know, and go through the data, what I hate seeing are the plays on that playlist that we ran four times, five times, seven times. Because all that meant was I wasted time practicing those things. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they were a big play at some point, you know, it might have been an important play in a game. Man, it's hard to justify working on something you're running – that few times in the whole season. Yeah, and, and I will tell you, I will tell you this. That that brings up a good point, Coach. I had I had a coach hit me up the other day, and ask me if we would do a um, a video on how um, we use huddle or or any uh, of those any of those uh, situations. And 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 so I think you bring a good point up with that is. I mean, how how often do you self scout during the year versus you know at the end of the year? Uh, honestly, not enough. Not, I mean, you know, I kind of look through each game when I when I grade it. You know, I grade everybody on offense. You know, I grade the O line, I grade the quarterbacks, I grade the receivers. I let the position coaches do it too, but I you know obviously I go over everything and I try and grade myself on it. But you know, I don't go through the actual data and huddle. Uh, you know, until usually about every three games, I'll run a re run my reports mm -hmm. just to kind of give myself a, a you know just to know, know what's going on, I guess. Right. But at the end of the end of the year, I do. You know, and I, I told you before, I think you know, I plan. I want to do one of those videos for you, and, and that's one of the ones I'll do and kind of go through all the reports I do and how I break it down because I do think it fits our offense especially because you know, like one of the things I look for is production for each play. You know, how pro how productive was the play. Um, how good were we at it, and you know, touches. You know, how much are we using each position on the field? Absolutely. You know, we go through all that. You know, not not detailed analytics like the pros do, but I do kind of drill down a little bit into that stuff. What do you do? You self scout a lot during the during the year, is or more more of like the end of the year, Chris? I do it during the year because um, I try to see who's touch. And mostly, it goes into who's touching the ball. Yeah. I want to make sure that I'm getting my dudes the ball. Uh, to be honest with you. And then when it comes to huddle, I mean, I know we all game plan and stuff, but when it comes to game plan and I'm looking for the front or the middle field open or closed, and really, especially where I coach receivers, I want to see how the DBs play on their techniques. Like, how is he going to turn when I outside release? You know, how is he going to turn when I inside release? That kind of thing. Because that's going to give me information that I can give my quarterback, especially when we're talking about those mandatory outside release plays. Yeah. Like, you know, the go and the, the, go and the, uh, the flat out. You know, it's going to give him a better idea of what's going to be open, and I can simulate that in practice better. Yeah, and and, and that's one of the, you know, I, I had a guy one time. He was one. Of, he was a stat guru, and every halftime he'd want to hand me a stat sheet. And all I really want to know at halftime is how many times X has touched the ball, how many times Y has touched the ball, Z touched the ball. And it goes back to one of the things that I guess somebody tried to grill Coach Leach one time about. You know, don't you need a balanced offense? And he was like, look, balanced offense isn't when rushing yards. And, and passing yards equal. He said, "How more? How much balance can you? More balance can you be than when you got five guys who touch the ball equal number of times?" Yeah, no, I think all that stuff's important. And I, I, like I said, I track all that. But I'm also, 
you know, I'm I'm concerned about how productive is that is are my plays. You know, for some stuff we're not going to change. Like if, if we're running slant and we're only completing 45, 50 percent, you know, I need to figure out why. You know, either if it's a bad play, we either got to get rid of it or we got to get better at it. Right. That's one of the things I think it helps us with. Hey, AJ just kicked in on guys on the chat. If you guys have any questions for us, hit us in on the chat. But AJ just kicked in, um, and he said, hey, look, you get curl on the backside of 94, so you don't really need to keep curl in your offense. He said, QB has the freedom to go backside versus three deep first in the progression. So, you know, they're doing a thing where if he gets pre-snap three deep, they're going to work curl flat on the backside instead of working the um, – the sale route. So that, that's something that you can do. Um, Coach Woods uh, wants to know what position do you like to play your best athlete? Tailback. <laughs> Tailback? Yeah. I mean, even as much as we love to throw the ball, you know, we're, we're at our best when we got a guy back there that the defense has to be aware of. I mean, he's still going to touch it more than any other guy on your team second to your quarterback. I mean, even if you got a great X and you throw the ball to him a ton of times, you're still going to hand it to that great tailback 20, 25 times a game. So he's still got to be the guy. Chris, what about you? For me, it's the Z. And I want to tell you why. It's because I'm still kind of old school and I use the flip and the flop and all. You know, I'm moving the Z around. I'm always keeping the Y on. But for me, it's the Z. But I do agree with Coach on this. You need to have a dude at the F or the tailback. I'm telling you. Because when you get in trouble, you need to find a running back. Yeah. yeah, Marcel, uh, Coach Newkirk um, asked if, if anybody combines Sale and Y. Claros. A lot of people, Coach, are, are running a 10-yard out with that H. Um, I still like to do the option route. I know some people would do like a little slants and different things. So, I mean, it, it really depends on what you're doing with the H out of two-by-two. Two. If uh, I know uh, Piscopo likes to run a 10-yard out on that deal. What are you doing with H on 95, Shane? Uh, well, like I said, when I was – my last couple years at South, we ran him on a shallow. And we brought the the F was actually was running a shoot route instead of him running an out route, mm -hmm. you know, because we played. So you just so swap, you that. just switched the spots. Yeah, that's right. We yeah. basically turned it into double under. Right, right. Um, the, the play action, and that worked out real good. I mean, I, I, that's probably my still my favorite way to run it. Um, the last, you know, the last six years down here, I've been doing it with the five yard out. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm. I'm I'm, I'm old school traditional. You know. right. It's been working great for 20 something years. Kind of <laughs> keep it what about you, Chris? Are, are you still, are you still doing the, are you doing a 10 yard out or anything on that? Or what are you doing? No, I like, I do a lot of blue formation on two back. So okay. I like the option route, but I, I think the best way to run uh, 95 is actually run 85 double under. That's what the play action. Yep. So yeah. I, I'm the same way. Man, don't, now, don't, 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 don't you, don't you say that 20 personnel word, man. We'll be here all night talking about two bags, man. I get that every day. Hey, congratulations, coach Puvalowski. He just questioned with Shane. I'll let you shot, jump on this one first, but he said, best advice for a new head coach just named Monday and been an OC for a while. So congratulations on your gig. I'm going to give you the piece of advice that was given to me, and I'm going to let Coach Dular do it. You have enjoyed your last football practice, my friend. <laughs> uh, you're right. Hire, hire a good staff. Hire a good staff. Don't hire your friends. Hire guys who work hard. I was, I was just going to say the same thing. That, that don't always mean your friends. You got to hire guys that are going to be committed, that are going to be loyal, that are willing to work. Because usually if you're a new head coach, it ain't because things went great the last few years. You got you to get the guys in the boat that are going to all row in the same direction. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. So, yeah, but congratulations on that. Um, uh, Rogers, coach Rogers wants to know, anybody attaching slow screens to their concepts? I'm running it on 95 and, and 8 out of 2 back. Um, yeah, I got a video on the um, I got a video on the channel, Coach. I know you see it because you comment all the time, but I like to run slow screens off of shallows, and I got that from Dana Holgerson. Uh, you know, we'll we'll run shallow and then kind of put the you know if we run you know eight shallow, we'll we'll run you know Rita or, or Lita back to the left hand side on that deal. So you know that's but it's it's the screen is called we're using the shallow motion to get the screen open. It's not a a screen PO or whatever. I, thought, right. I think I just created a word. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're the same way. We're, we're going to do mesh or we're going to do shallow or we'll do six, you know, when we run the slip screen. But we're not going to actually pair them up and actually try and double read that thing. If I call a, a pass concept, it's, it's going to be a pass concept. Right. And I'm kind of the same way. I, you know, open 95. 
I'm trying to run it with the F and then I'm running it to the right. That when I'm looking at cross, I'm throwing slow screen to the right. And then out of two back, out of blue, I'll run a 92 H slow, you know, because nobody pays attention to the H when you're running a 92. Right. So I think that's a way to get them the ball. But here's the key on slow screens. It's really good on third and long because they're sending heat usually. And it's a safe throw for you to back. Yeah, yeah. I, I will tell you one of my biggest – goes back to one of those questions they asked me, you know, one of the mistakes you made. I, I was on like the – the nine yard line coming out and I called a screen. It, it didn't end so well. <laughs> so That's why you should script. Yeah, I should have scripted that thing, but you know, I was twenty six and thought I was a lot better than I was back then. But uh yeah, you know you know, sometimes you know and that and I think that goes back to what Shane was speaking about earlier when you're looking at guys and, and knowing what's working and and if you are getting a lot of heat, you know, if you if you play me and Shane Shane played me before and I'm gonna come and, you know, I was a 3-4 guy. And one of the things that, that Shane did to us is he ran inside zone. But what he did is he blocked out on the four technique with his guard and wrapped underneath with the tackle. And that, and that set up his cutback lane instead of them trying to scoop that out backside. So, you know, it's one of those little things that you, that you come up with. And, um, and, and like I said, I hope Shane is not there for air raid intensive. If you guys haven't gotten your tickets yet, those uh, there's about 25 of them left for the 40-man clinic that we're doing here in Fayetteville on December the 7th. And if it sells out, um, if you do attend, we'll give you, um, you know, free access to the, um, to the videos. But, um, you know, Shane will talk a little bit about running game. But like I said, hopefully he'll be playing for the ship and uh, – and, and, and next week and, and he's got a big task ahead of him but you know like I said he's got some dogs down there in Myrtle Beach and uh and, and they've done just a phenomenal nominal job hey guys we're gonna stay on for a couple more minutes so if you have a few more questions um um you know let us know uh you know we're, we're, we're here to help you out we'd like to do this a little bit more it's been kind of fun on you guys enjoyed this you know just chit chatting talking ball and in the off season kind of over here in the air raid chat coach mommy's posting videos responses so that's the cool thing you'll be able to go over and get into his um into his uh hashtag and you can watch all of his little video responses to the questions you guys have and the one thing i will tell you if you do get air raid certified and aj's in the chat chat so he, he'll 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 confirm this the one thing about coach mommy is this if, if if you get a relationship with Coach Mummy, if you text him, he might not text you right back because I texted him today and said, hey, Coach Mummy, we're going to do a live stream tonight while you're doing your thing. And that was like at two o'clock, about 630. I got a, you know, I got I got a response from uh, from Coach Mummy. So, you know, he, he he's really good about getting back to you if you have questions. And, um, and, and I'm telling you, it's just it's it's really good. And, and I will tell you this, guys, as a young head coach, I was 26 years old. You know, I got two pieces of advice given to me. The first one was, you know, you've enjoyed your last football practice because now you're going to be worried about everything else that's going. And the other one is don't be afraid to ask questions. And that goes to getting into people like like the 92 Mesh Group guys and, and, and all these other guys who are on, on the Internet and on Twitter and stuff like that. Build you a network. Find guys you can you can ask questions to. Yo, Coach, how did you handle this? How coach? Because, listen, as a young head coach, Coach Will, one of the things that you're going to have to deal with that you never thought about is, okay, you know, something got stolen out of the locker room on a, on a Thursday afternoon and, and somebody <laughs> accused this kid of doing it. And, OK, are you going to let him play or are you not going to play? You know, those kind of things. Or it's the third round of the playoffs and, and this happens and that happens. And, 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 you know, these are things that everybody's got an opinion, man. But when your name is on the top, your, your opinion is the one that matters. So it's always good to be able to talk to guys. And I've been really fortunate in my last three jobs. I was able to hire guys who had been head coaches before. And we could shut the door and have a conversation. And I'd look at him and say, what would you do? You know, and then ultimately, you know, just make that decision. So that that's really good when you talk about, um, you know, surrounding yourself with good people. Um, so, guys. What, what other, other piece of advice for that, for, for the new head coach, coach there? Don't, don't forget about the relationships with, with the players. players. You know, you know, a lot of times if you're a good assistant coach, coach it's because you had a great relationship, relationship with your group. group. And, and then when you become, become the head coach, coach, all that other stuff becomes overwhelming. And you got all the big picture that you have to worry about. you got to be the discipline guy now. A lot of times, you know, it's easy to forget about, you know, be, be there for them and love them as people first, players second. And if you do that, then they'll play hard for you and they'll love you. Yeah, and that's one of the things that, you know, Coach Salas talked about when they doubled down on um, – on, on culture and if you haven't read that book uh by by coach jackson down in texas that tpw book 
Um, he, he, he wrote a great book about culture over, um, you know, over, over football and stuff like that. You need to look at that book, too. That's a really good book. I read it last year. Talked to him a little bit on Twitter. He's pretty active on Twitter in the off season. Um, and he goes to some clinics and talks and does some stuff like that. Also, um, if you haven't read The Coffee Bean, you need to read The Coffee Bean. I'm telling you, it's 70 pages. You can read it in 20, 25 minutes. It's, it's a very good anecdotal book. It's written by a guy named Damon West. Um, he wrote it with John Gordon. But it just it, it, has, it really resonates with you um, about what happens. And I'm not going to spoil the story, but... You know, there's a reason why Dabo Sweeney and, and Nick Saban and all those guys have had Dave and West come talk to their team. And so I would really suggest that you check check that out. And, uh, you know, Damon, you can follow Damon on Twitter. He's at Damon West 7. Um, you know, he's a former college college quarterback. But, you know, he wrote that book, and it's a really, really good book. And um, uh, here's a, here's another question that came in. Hey, one more question, guys. How, how do you feel about 12 personnel and air raid? Anyone use it? Do you feel it can take you – it can take away from the integrity of what the air raid is all about. I'll give you my answer real quick. I, I don't think it matters um, because I always teach that um, <clears throat> that H and F are interchangeable. So, you know, it doesn't matter what you do with them. I mean, all you're doing in 12 personnel is you're taking H and, and you're putting them on the line of scrimmage or, you know, however you want to do it. Um, I don't know what you guys think. I, I, I don't think it ruins anything. Yeah, yes, we use it all the time. time. Um, you know, we're playing a, an odd front team. A lot of times getting two tight ends is a way to kind of balance up your numbers and get the gaps back where you want them. You know, at Boston State, with Hal Mummy, we, we use two tight ends at times. I mean, it's all part of the system, exactly what you said. One's a Y, one's an H. No big deal. You know, go with it from there. Yeah, and, and, that, and that goes with teaching concepts. You know, if you teach the concept of the play, shallow is this. So, okay, look, if H is over, if he's attached and you're running H shallow, he still runs a shallow. And then the guy opposite H knows if the shallow is coming to me, I'm running a dig. And then the back knows that if the shallow is going to the right, I need to go to the left. And, and you know, and that's what you do is you teach those those bubbles and, and route replaced. Uh, do y'all do much too, back, uh, too tight end up there, Chris? We, we don't, don't do too tight end, end, but I have before in the past. Here, here's my advice. Use your dudes. If you've got two tight ends and they're studs, use them. You know, if you got five good wide receivers, be five wide. If you've got two good running backs, be 20 personnel. The concept, the main thing is the concept stays the same. You know, the reads are sacred. As long as you keep those the same, you're going to be fine. Um, hey, coaches, all, a lot of the guys are asking, well, before you answer that, and I'm going to put it in the chat too, but a lot of these guys are wanting to know what your Twitter handles are. So if you'll go ahead and tell them, I'll type you guys in down here too because at Doobie Doolar, right? That's right. And it would help if I could spell. Doolar. I can't help you on that one. Well, yeah, you know, hey, I went to Appalachian State. Hi, hi, I guess there's nobody like us. We are the Mountaineers. Having Bro, a I'm a real Mountaineer. I can't spell anything. A I'm real Mountaineer. Oh, boy, there might be a fight up in here. <laughs> West by God, Virginia. I tell you what. Uh, another question is, what's your favorite Air Raid college team to watch? Uh, all of them. Uh, yeah. 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 No, I, I, I really. Something from all of them. I, I would love to be able to watch football as a fan again. But I, I just really can't. I, I, I love coaches, and I love seeing what guys do with football teams. And, and I love, you know, because I have a personal relationship with a lot of those guys, you know, I had a chance to know, know Lincoln when he was at East Carolina because I had a guy up there, so I spent a lot of time with him and, 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 and um, you know, knowing Coach Leach and, and Coach Mummy and those guys and, and watching them go. And, you know, I, I just wish Coach Leach would just come on back over to this side of the country so we could watch him at a decent hour on TV. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm with you there. The, the only channel, channel I don't, the, the only sports, sports channel, channel I don't get is, uh, the Pac-12. It's kind of hard to watch them. And, and every game starts at 10.30. Yeah, so. and look, I don't know about y'all, but I'm old, man. Look, it's no no shave November. has then showed my age, man. I swear, I got salt and ketchup beer. Red well, and white, I tell you, white. up here, our Sunday meeting starts at 6 a.m., so that, that 10.30 game, a, that's a tough one. Yeah, yeah, that's not happening. That's not happening. Yeah, that's out. But, uh, yeah, obviously I love watching Leach because it still looks like us a lot of ways. I mean, you look out there and you're going to recognize most of what he does. You know, a lot of the you know a lot of the other guys you watch their games and you see bits and pieces, but it doesn't look like us anymore. And I do I love watching Oklahoma play, play because I think some of the stuff they do incorporating the gap schemes and uh, and the RPOs I just I think they they were way ahead of the curve on some of that stuff. Coach Corey, Coach Leach better not go to Arkansas. He, he that's that's a that's not a good place for him. He, I I hear I know that's the rumor, but. 
that I don't I just don't the recruiting is I don't know I, I just don't think that's him he should have he should have he should have went to Florida State I think or Miami I wanted him to go to Miami so bad I mean the Pirates at Miami would have been pretty awesome, but um, I'm sure he would have to do that too. Yeah, don't yeah. forget about our boy Matt in Nevada either. I try to stay up and watch my boy Matt. Right? Yeah, yeah, Matt. I t- a matter of fact, I talked I talked to Matt uh, day before yesterday, and uh, you know they're getting ready to go play UNLV, and then and then hopefully a bowl game. And uh, well, they're not hopefully they qualify for a bowl game. I mean, just not sure where they're going to be going. They've had a really good year out there. Matt's done a good job. Uh, I, I miss Matt being at Lagrange because I could watch him up close every other year because they would come up here and play Methodist University. And um, but uh, you know he's done a good job down there with those guys. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, Mark, I, I know neither was Wazoo, but Wazoo don't have to play LSU, Alabama, Mississippi State, Florida, Georgia. I, I would say Tennessee because I'm a Tennessee fan, but, you know, playing us is a, is a blessing these days right now. But if we're coming back, though, we're, we're getting better. But uh, going to Arkansas is a little bit harder to turn around than it is going to Wazoo. But, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I'll leave that to my buddy. Hey, listen, if you, got, if you guys want to talk college football, you need to follow my boy uh, Brad Crawford. Uh, he's a, at B Crawford 247. Uh, he was, used to be a local um, reporter around here. Now he's the SEC, uh, main SEC guy for 24-7 sports, and he follows, um, he follows SEC stuff. And you want to talk to him, he can tell you everything you want to know about any of that stuff and why Leach doesn't need to be at Arkansas. Uh, only, only reason Arkansas wants Leach is because they need to sell tickets. Y'all gonna get me in trouble on the air raid chat, messing with Arkansas. <laughs> Dad, gonna have to change my last name to Clinton so I can go back to Arkansas. Hey, hey George, George, you guys have that, that uh, VAR system, that, that AJ stuff, stuff we, we have, have it. It's awesome. awesome. Do you guys have that? No, no, man. Look, man. I, well, I, you can't mess with money. Yeah, no. My, my our coaching staffs on free lunch. What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 no, uh, I, but I will say this, and, and AJ and AJ can 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 attest to this. Uh, they do everything they can to make it affordable for people who want to do it. I knew I think they have a two or three year payment option. I don't I don't I'm not sure how much it costs. Uh, I'm just talking to Coach Mummy, but I, I know it's not like uber uber oppressive. They want it to. Uh, you know, they're not trying to break the bank on that thing. They want it to be available. Just like those guys that just play sports. If you saw my video yesterday, um, that that is an awesome system. Um, you know, we've been playing around with it here at the Mesh Group just to kind of fill it out and, and you know, kind of beta test it and, um, and do some things for them. But, you know, making t- teaching tapes and things like that. Um, AJ, AJ just popped in. AJ works for VAR. And uh, I'm not going to say that second thing you just said, AJ. You'll get me in trouble for that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's about 3500 bucks, I think. So, I mean, like I said, that's not that's not uber oppressive. It's about the price of a sled. I mean, and if you, uh, you know, if you're an air raid guy, you know, that's probably as important as a sled is to, you know, a wing T team or something like that. But, uh, but like I said, um, <clears throat> you know. They were also, uh, they had already produced some videos that they made with the 360 video from that. Well, a lot of our concepts already on there. Yeah, I think you get for like a hundred bucks. Yeah, AJ know, AJ's got a course on CoachTube. I did see that, and I, I saw something today because when he when he announced that they were going to give us uh, um, when they were going to give us badge status with with the certified, they're doing some kind of bundle on Black Friday where you can get the Air Raid certified and. Um, and the air raid certified is the material with uh, with the um, with the 360 stuff. Um, I did I did see that when I was perusing through it. And um, but yeah, they, they do that. AJ did a video. He has a course on on Coach Tube where you can go in and see it. And it is the concepts and and it, and it's pretty different. I mean, how 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 much do y'all use it, Chris? Is it more of an off season thing or? Well, it's I mean you can't put a value on the reps. You're getting reps all the off season. And we don't even have a football out there, you know, because it's pretty neat to put that thing on. And also our backups are getting a lot of reps. Mm-hmm. You know, usually those guys don't get to take a lot of reps. So they're in there getting to see the reps. And they're doing it with Washington State. You know, that swing looks a lot faster and that defense looks a lot faster when, when you got those guys doing it. But it gives them a clearer picture. I, I, I mean, I support it. I think it's yeah. great. AJ, put your, um, put your Twitter in, in, the, um, in the comment section so the guys can, can look at it and they can hit you up and, and y'all guys can talk. Um, about about that VAR, but like I said, uh, VAR is there, and I do believe that VAR is going to be an air raid nation. I was talking to Coach Mummy about that, uh, so they'll have somebody up here who's going to talk to some people when we do the big clinic in May. Um, all right, guys, hey, listen, we're get we're getting down to some time. It's past five minutes to Coach Dular's bedtime. Um, and, right, and uh, you can follow Coach Smith, AJ Smith, at, at VAR underscore Systems. Um, he he does that gig, but he's also the wide receiver coach for the new XFL team in Houston. 
I'm sorry I don't know the, I don't know the mascot because I'm already a Dallas Renegades fan. Um, but uh, <laughs> got a T-shirt and everything. It's pretty cool. But um, uh, I think that's a good deal. So follow AJ on that. So we'll take we'll take one more question and then we're gonna we're gonna get up off of here. We really appreciate you guys coming in tonight. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, follow us over at the, at the website, um, 92meshgroup.com. we got a lot of different things we're doing. We put the jobs board back up. Um, jobs board is, is now free. We got some sponsors to take care of that. Oh, the Roughnecks. I like, I like that, AJ. Um, but you can just go in, post a job if you're looking for somebody, um, and, and do that and, and do those kind of things. Also, like I said, um, if you're an Air Raid System member by, by November 30th, you're going to be grandfathered in to 2.0 when we put it on Coach Tube in December. Um, and, and so that'll have all the, um, the play clips and things like that. And then, like, like I said, and I tell people this all the time, if you're not, if you don't think you're ready for air raid certified, um, you know, come, come, come look at the stuff that we have, get yourself a basis, watch the channel when we do some videos and, and come on the podcast and stuff like this with, with Shane. And this will, this will be a podcast. I'll try to get it up in the next day or so. It'll be at, uh, squadron 533, uh, dot com. And also, you'll, there'll be a link on the website at 92meshgroup.com. And, and like I said, just follow us on Twitter at, at CNAP87, at Doobie Dular. Check out Shane's webpage at, at Dular, uh airraid.com and and you know once again guys we're just here for you hit us up on twitter hit us up on facebook we got a facebook group page and as always spin it to win <laughs>